What do you think you could do first thing in the morning that will guarantee you that it will make God happy? Let's take a look at that very question. In 2 Chronicles chapter 1, Solomon becomes king. And he's doing a good job. He's kind of getting things started right, doing the sacrifices, the sacrifice of a thousand animals. But then he prays this prayer. He says, Lord, give me wisdom, in verse 10, and knowledge to go and come before this people. For who can govern this people of yours, which is so great. This is a pretty amazing prayer. He says, I'm not enough. A person's humility and respect for God is expressed best in a prayer asking God for wisdom. This prayer makes God so happy. Now, you're not a king, and I'm not a king, and we don't have kingdoms. But we do have a life we're leading. You're leading a life. Many of you have families you're leading, many people in your family. You have friends that you're leading. You might have a relationship in your church where there's responsibility that you have. You're leading in that ministry. Extracurricular things that are going on in your life. You're leading in that. You lead. And to wake up first thing in the morning and say, God, I need you, is something that makes God very, very happy. Here's why. Number one, you're saying, I don't have the answers. There's things out there I don't know, and you know, and I need Number two, it says, you do have the answers. You're respecting who God is. Number three, you're saying, I want to lead well for the sake of the people around me. I want to do a good job. Number four, you're saying, I want to please you in everything that I do today. That says a lot, and God blesses you when you say that. Here's what God said to Solomon. God answered Solomon, because of this was in your heart. And you have not asked for possessions, wealth, honor, or life of those who hate you. And have not asked for long life, but you've asked for wisdom and knowledge for yourself, that you may govern my people over whom I have made you king. Wisdom and knowledge are granted to you. He says, I'm going to give it to you. I will also give you riches, possessions, and honor, such as none of the kings had who were before you, and none after you shall have the like. God says, you know what? Nothing makes me as happy as when you humble yourself before me and you ask me for wisdom. It shows God great respect. It shows that you don't have that uh, big view of yourself like, oh, I got all the answers. And God promises you the wisdom. James 1.5 says, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all men liberally and upbraideth not, and it will be given him. But let him ask in faith, not wavering. For he that wavers is like a wave of the sin driven uh, of, of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. Let not that man think he will receive anything of the Lord. He's a dull-minded man, unstable in all his ways. James says, look, God will answer your prayer, but you gotta believe. Believe that God's hearing your request and that he'll answer it. Believe that. Because if you are gonna pray and not believe, don't even pray. In fact, he says, don't think you're gonna get anything from the Lord if you don't believe. And trust him. So trust God. He'll give you the wisdom. But what this passage says is that God just might give you more than what you're asking for. Just like he did for Solomon. Why don't you start today by asking God for wisdom?